Ladies and gentlemen, here's your second stimulus check update for September 1st, 2020. In this video, I'm going to tell you to which states FEMA just awarded the grant to pay for the $300 a week boost up and enhance unemployment payments funded by the federal government. I'm also going to tell you what White House Chief of Staff and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just told CNBC in regards to the state of the negotiations for the next round of stimulus. I'm also gonna tell you what Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin told Lou Dobbs last night in regards to these negotiation talks. And stay tuned for Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin will speak at a hearing before the House Special Committee on the Virus today at 1 p.m. EST. FEMA has awarded the grant to pay for the $300 a week boost up enhanced unemployment benefits funded by the federal government mandated by President Donald Trump when he signed his executive order on August 8th. Two more states, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far, FEMA has awarded the grant to pay for these $300 a week boost up to the states of Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, Missouri, Utah, New Mexico, Idaho, Montana, Oklahoma, Maryland, Kentucky, Texas, Michigan, North Carolina, California, Alabama, Indiana, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Mississippi, Vermont, Rhode Island, New York, Georgia, Alaska, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Washington, Connecticut, Arkansas, Maine, Virginia, Ohio, West Virginia, Oregon, Wyoming, Hawaii, Florida, Minnesota, and North Dakota. So, so far, FEMA has awarded the grant to pay for the $300 a week boost up enhanced unemployment benefits to 10, 20, 30, 41 states so far, ladies and gentlemen. As of right now, the states of Arizona, Louisiana, Missouri, Montana, Tennessee, and Texas have officially announced that they will pay out these benefits or have already paid out these benefits this month, ladies and gentlemen. The states of Rhode Island and New Hampshire have announced that they will increase the minimum state benefit to $100 so everyone in the state will qualify to receive the $300 a week boost up. As you know, President Donald Trump, through his executive order, mandated that states had to pay out originally a $100 a week boost up in state-funded benefits so the state would be able to pay out the $300 a week federally funded boost up to people in the states receiving unemployment insurance. As of right now, Kentucky, Montana, and West Virginia are the only states to officially announce that they will pay out the three, the state benefit, regular state benefits, plus the $100 a week, 25% share of the $400 a week boost up and the $300 a week federally funded boost up, making a total of $400 a week boost up and enhanced unemployment benefits. I'll keep you up to date as to what happens with this program. As I told you in previous videos, FEMA is dispersing a grant to only pay for three weeks of enhanced unemployment benefits at $300 level. FEMA has announced that it is spending more money to these states that have been impacted by the natural disasters, by the hurricanes, by the fires out west. Ladies and gentlemen, so this may be the only grant that FEMA is to pay out because originally FEMA had lined up to pay out the $300, the three-week grant or the grant to cover up to three weeks of payments. Then it would go ahead and disperse an additional week an additional grant to cover an additional week of payments as needed on a state-by-state -state basis, ladies and gentlemen. I'll keep you up to date with the program. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows went on CNBC this morning to discuss the state of the negotiations for the next round of stimulus. First, Kayla Tosh from CNBC stated that she had just spoken to Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's team and... They relayed to her that the speaker wanted to reach an agreement by first agreeing to a top line number, in other words, the $2.2 trillion that the Democrats are requesting, and then backfilling all the provisions that that $2.2 trillion will actually pay for. Mark Meadows, Chief Mark Meadows, is adamantly opposed to taking this approach in order to reach an agreement and make a deal with the Democrats. He states that he first wants to list all the provisions and then come up with a top line number based on the sum of what each provision will cost. In other words, each provision. So let's say another round of stimulus checks will cost $300 billion, and then the Paycheck Protection Program will cost another $200 billion. Let's say that's it. But of course, there's more. Let's say we need $300 more billion for the un enhanced unemployment. That's $300, $300, and $200. So that would be six. That That'd be $800 billion, and that would be their total amount. That's just an example of how they would like to line up all the provisions in order to reach an agreement with the Democrats. He's also stating that Nancy Pelosi is they is requesting the $2.2 trillion. Nonetheless, they're not saying what are the provisions that those $2.2 trillion will actually pay for. So that's where they have a problem. He states that the biggest obstacle that the administration and Democrats encounter in order to reach an agreement 
is the funding for state and local governments, ladies and gentlemen. He states that states and local state governments and local governments stand to suffer a revenue shortfall of two hundred and seventy-five billion dollars. Did not cite a source for that figure. He said that they will stand to suffer two hundred seventy-five billion dollars. That said, the administration is calling for an additional one hundred and fifty billion dollars to fund state and local governments, and together with the one hundred fifty billion dollars that the federal government already paid out to state and local governments through the CARES Act. That would cover that $275 billion shortfall. Nonetheless, the Center on Budget Priorities and Policies found that states actually stand to suffer a $555 billion shortfall. That said, Democrats want $915 billion for state and local governments, ladies and gentlemen. He also stated that uh, he's actually working around the clock with GOP senators to pass a bill next week. And it may resemble that skinny bill that the GOP was actually floating through the Senate in order to get passed, which is at $500 billion and is calling for, to name a few of the provisions, another round of Paycheck Protection Program funds, uh, $300 a week enhanced unemployment benefits. Nonetheless, it excludes the next round of stimulus checks. It also has no mention of eviction moratoriums and no mention of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program. Ideally, as, as per S.4227, the full disbursement of $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant for all legitimate small business applicants. But as you know, the HEROES Act is calling for $10 billion in order to open up the advanced program once again. He did state, nonetheless, that Mark Meadows, Chief Meadows, and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin is are working closely together to come up with a more comprehensive package to financially support small businesses. So that can include, and I'm pretty sure it's going to include, another round of Paycheck Protection Program funds, perhaps making it easier for people to apply for forgiveness for this program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program and more funding for the loans. As Senator Ben Cardin stating that that fund is either exhausted or is getting exhausted. But SBA actually sent me an email the other day stating that it is still taking applications for the economic injury disaster loan. Now, stay tuned today for Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin will speak at a hearing before the House Special Committee on the virus. And he stated yesterday on Lou Dobbs that the Democrats are actually trying to negotiate in bad faith because, again, he repeated what, well, not repeated, well, yeah, because... Mark Meadows has been saying the same thing over and over again, that the Democrats keep coming to the table with the $2.2 trillion top line number. Nonetheless, they're not saying what is actually in that package. What, it, what do they actually want to pay for with that $2.2 trillion figure? So that said, according to Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, they're coming to the table with bad faith. And he states that all the administration wants a $1.3 trillion package or something closer to the $1 trillion mark. The administration is willing to come to the table with more money in order to get something passed. Mark Meadows actually stated this, that the package that he's working with the GOP in order to pass, it could either be close to what the skinny bill is or something that they could use as a foundation and then come to an agreement with four or five other provisions and then go ahead and add that to the package, then pass that, and if there are any differences. So that's where they both echo each other. Both Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows stated that if there are any differences in what they come to an agreement, then they can go ahead and come back for more funding through another round of stimulus. Again, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin will speak at a hearing before the House Committee on the virus today at 1 p.m. EST. I'll drop a video later on today to go ahead and tell you what he told the House let me know what you think. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Watch this video right here for more stimulus coverage. Click the like button if you like the video. Click the subscribe button to stay on top of my findings. I stop at nothing. Mobilize like no one else will to ensure that each and every one of you is equipped with the monetary ammunition you need to save this country. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America and everybody else on this planet. Talk soon.